Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to a special two-part showcase on this week's upcoming vault. First up, we have the kits, which believe it or not, this is not actually the entire hall. There's still a little bit more sitting oh my over gosh, in our there studio. Is. <laughs> uh, so we had pretty much everything we could fit on the table and we wanted to go over some of the highlights, but make sure you're still tuning in Thursday at 8 a.m. Central Time because there's going to be even more than this kit-wise available lots, in the lots vault. Lots more. Yeah, so we, we've been going crazy. It's been fun because we've been getting some of these uh, kits and once they're retired, we want to make sure you guys get your last chance to pick them up, especially if they're ones, you know, if you're a little newer Brick Maniac and you've missed out on some past eras, there might be one that you know is really Absolutely. really up there on your list. So this is a cool chance to do that. One of my favorite builds over the last <laughs> couple of years actually is in here. This is the FUD. Um, this is one we were only able to do a batch of 50 of right. because of part availability. Rare, rare pieces in there. And so it was retired rather quickly and now is back in the, or is going to the vault, I believe for the first time. This will be the yeah. first one. So hopefully there'll be a couple of segments. But Dan described this uh, when he first built it as a brick built lawn dart. And it, it is so <laughs> true because this thing is super solid. Yeah, do not drop it on your foot. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, and just a really cool build, obviously, that uh, Vietnam era camo. These, these all just came Super back from our store, well. so we, <laughs> yeah. they, 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 they may be a little worse for whoops, worse, worse for travel wear. Sorry, I stepped off my podium. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that, uh, yeah, when we have Dan down for these videos, he's like, oh, you guys all put these together, didn't you? And we're like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> we'll talk through them. So, yeah, thud, a uh, major highlight, I think, for this one going around, but obviously there's a nice collection. And I think my favorite thing about these recent era of vaults is that our production has become so mixed in different Cold War, modern, mm -hmm. World War II that the vault like reflects that variety. And so there really is something for everybody each month around, uh, which is cool to see here as we can start. Um, but where, where do you want to start? You got a, you got a Blackhawk, well, which I, I think, think might be the first one to hit the vault. Yeah, it, it possibly is. These, this, is, this, is a, this is the Blackhawk. This is a um, U-860M. So mm -hmm. it's, it's an early version of the modern Blackhawk helicopter, the most, the most recent one. Um, this would be the Mogadishu. Right. So if you're if you're trying to put together, if you got your, just recently got yourself some Mogadishu Delta operators and some of the, the Rangers, this would be your helicopter. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's sort of at the at tail end of the Brick Mania sticker area. Yeah. Sticker era. Um, so it's all the all the there's there's a little bit of printing inside. Obviously the figures are printed. Mm -hmm. the, the crew is printed, but most of what you see on the outside are stickers. Right. And that was before we we increased our, our printing capacity. So a lot of stickers. A lot of these models have stickers versus. Mm -hmm. um, Printed elements. Printed, yeah, just because we didn't have that sort of cap capacity. The bonus being that they most of them will also come with a duplicate sticker pack right. as opposed to what's on the, the models it, it, as well. If you, if it, you know, we're, the, we're planning on, uh, you know, shipping damages. You don't get yeah. these. We don't actually take them apart. We'll nope. wrap them in bubble wrap and, and, and pack them in peanuts and send them to you. Uh, so they'll, they'll arrive more or less intact. Mm -hmm. um, but we will send you an instruction book, one of the original instruction books, and any display cards. If, these came from our retail store. So if we have the original display cards, that's kind of a nice bonus. We also do a certificate of authenticity Always. that goes with each one. So you know this is a vault offering. It's not somebody uh, trying to hobble together pieces off of you know wherever they can find the pieces and, and using our digital instructions. These are the real deal. These, yes. are, these are actual, it's either gonna be one of two things. It's going to be in a rare occasion, you'll get a prototype model. Mm -hmm. Um, that rare being because most of those prototype models end up at the GHQ store. Um, it's it's kind of our personal. Our, our it has got to be an archive yeah. somewhere. Yeah, right, right. So it's a lot of history. If you, if you ever get to the GHQ store, you can see literally twenty years of Brickmania wall history. Of models. We don't we don't have everything out, but we have as much as we can put out. Yeah, so, um, much as we have room for. Um, so these are display copies. It's probably been on display either in Chicago or Chantilly. Or Chantilly, Virginia. So one of one of the what, and they're bi basically building a kit. It's mm -hmm. not. It might be test built by our team here in in the warehouse and our design team, or it's built by one of the store employees. So it's 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 as intact as we think we can get it. Mm -hmm. um, there might be a piece or two missing here. I can't guarantee that it's a hundred percent complete. Um, but you will get the instructions. You will get a reference to, to make sure that it, it's yep. it, it's as close as we can get it. Yeah, and we do our best to run down and make sure all the extras are, are put together. And obviously, we want to make sure that people are happy with what they get on the other end. So we haven't had any issues in the past. So I'm assuming that we're doing a good job on the back end. I, of I do want I do want to say good. though, like if if there's a printed element or a unique element, we will try to get that for you. Yes. But if it's just like you're missing a tile here and there, you you might be on your own. Now. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so moving on to continuing with, with the collection. Sure, sure. Um, we, yeah. I think we have some cool examples here of early, well not even necessarily early because it's been happening for a while, but the real expansion into 3D printed accessories um, within the Brickmania arsenal. So you'll notice we actually just recently released the Pershing on digital instructions. So the kit obviously has been retired, that's why it is now on digital instructions. But this barrel muzzle brake configuration is kind of one of those examples of when we moved past the 
the era where you can obviously tell that something is very 3D printed into the era where we begin to kind of like blend that difference between like, wow, is that 3D printed? That's really, really nice right. and clean looking. Um, and I just think this Pershing is a great example. And then the Arthos, yeah. yeah, is also an awesome <laughs> example of integrating an insane amount of 3D printing to bring a lot more lifelike, realistic look into this build. And But to be totally honest, the Anthos is a weird example of that because that thing doesn't even look like something that existed to begin with. Right, right. <laughs> but it is, it is, those are a combination of our parts, the little spotter guns on right. the top, the, the chamber for the uh, recoilless rifles. Those are our parts that mm -hmm. we, we designed. We actually designed that for a, a Jeep kit. Yeah, and right. They're the, like, hey, we gotta the make, we've got to make the Antos after it. So it's a combination of Lego, brick arms, and brick mania parts. We really first started getting our our groove on the 3D printed parts. Mm -hmm. and this is like our generation three printer. Right. And now we're on generation four. So it's kind of like, I, I see these and go, that's great. But I, I, what, what's coming, what's coming down the pipeline is gonna be so much better. Yeah, it's and cool. Not that these are bad. Mm -hmm. But it's it's like you won't even be able to tell the difference between a 3D printed part and an injection molded part. It is insane how, yeah. how uh, strong that whole thing is getting as well. And the other cool thing about that is a lot of these, because of our really limited 3D printing capacities at the time of these models coming out, uh, they weren't ever really available in plentifulness. I mean, they, they, we just didn't do a lot of batches of them. So both the Antos and the Pershing saw super limited actual releases. Right. Um, and so once again, if you're a new Brick Maniac circling back and seeing this era, you know, the Antos isn't something that you're going to see regularly in the Brick Mania line. I, I, I don't foresee us being able to sell those recoilless rifle pieces. Yeah. It's, it's not, so you pretty much you're going to buy this or maybe you'll get it in a, in a future release. We've done mm -hmm. three three models so far with the, with the recoilless rifle. And I think only one of them is in production. Actually sticking around, yeah, which is, I think, the Mutt one from, from the Vietnam era. Right, and I'm not even sure if we're going to be doing more of those because... You never know. The, the schedule, it's so ridiculous. The schedule is so ridiculously full <laughs> and we have so many models. So... It's 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 sort of bad if you want to buy like a production kit, but it's good if you're a vault follower. Yes, <laughs> you right. You'll see you see a lot more models. It in is. The vault. It definitely pays to be focusing on the on the vault right now, which is why we're trying to big it back, bring it back. Um, in such a big way. Another good example too of just like, not necessarily anything 3D printed or super unique about this kit, but Centurion Mark III designed by John Canepa, kind of a niche interest in that build to begin with. And so we didn't do very many of them. So super limited model now that after the fact has actually circled around to a lot of people being like, hey, can you bring that back? And we're right. like, no, sorry, it's retired. Now you get a chance to get it in the vault. We have we did a, a main battle tank series. It was yeah. a couple that was modern. We did a modern series, then we did a Cold War series. Mm -hmm. and. and at the time, and there wasn't that much interest in, and it was kind of like pu we're, we're pushing things that people weren't really interested in. And um, of course, after we discontinued them, we only made like 50 or 100. Then everybody's like, where'd it go? Yeah, I'm like, well, <laughs> you didn't buy it when it came out, when it was new in the store. So we, I mean, we didn't, it's not like we were putting out a new one every week. I right. think they were a month apart. Uh, but still, there was there was a waning interest in, in the kits that we were putting out. So oh, well, we'll move on to the next thing. So mm -hmm. a lot of them didn't actually get further batches than the original, so. Which is cool for the vault because then that means if you're circling back on picking that up, obviously you might literally get number 51 because <laughs> there was only 50 others that right. were even available. So yeah, a, a cool part of that. Um, and then as you can see, we've also got some size and some exclusivity mixed in to the aircraft. We already talked a little bit about the thud. This Hind was a pretty popular build when it first came out. I think, I think it still is. Chechen, I wanted to say. No, this is Hungarian. Hungarian Hind. Yeah, okay, fair uh, enough. I'm uh, not sure if the Chechens have Hinds. They might have. <laughs> hard to know. If, if they did, the Russians probably wrecked them. <laughs> it was, I was pretty much just guessing to be totally honest no, anyways but it's a hungarian i mean it, it's it is a russian uh soviet mm -hmm. soviet era uh, attack helicopter uh, i did the original kit years ago and yeah. this was an updated version of it um you know not only updated with the bricks that were available but updated to a modern version of the Heinz. So sure. it was the original one was a you know a, a early you know 1980s mm -hmm. uh, cold war era then this is a, a post cold war uh, adaptation, the one with the 30 millimeter gun on it. Yeah. So a little, little bit different armament. So a later model hind. Um, cool. You also, when you get this, it comes with the Hungarian stickers, but if you want to uh, revert it to a, a Soviet era, it comes you can with do that stars. as well. It does come, yeah. with, does come with an alternative sticker scheme. You've got options, but I, I like this build just because, like, even you know, depending on what you're what you're looking for, it's just it's a big nasty gunship. Like that's right. Just cool. The side doors open up, and you can have your, your commandos <laughs> jumping out of it. Yep. So. Yeah. So that's that's a fun piece as well. Obviously, the Skyhawk we have sitting over there, right. incredibly limited release. Probably our most recent addition to the vault as well, because we locked that at a batch of fifty, even though we knew it was going to be popular. It was kind of a special release. Did, um, it, did so, it sell out in one day, or is it oh yeah, it was very very fast. <laughs> 
was, it was I, very, I seem to remember it being very popular, but mm -hmm. it was it, it was it was gone before you knew it. Yeah, once before people you knew it. once people got the word that it was only going to get uh, its one batch and then was going to move on, that uh, that definitely sparked some interest. So this is also the first time that this one's appearing in the vault. So that would mean, in theory, there might be one more chance, um, but then it's done and it's gone forever, and you won't if, have another chance in the vault. If we don't so. decide to, to take the next model and sell it at World War Break. Yeah, right. That's so, the other thing is you so, gotta you gotta know that that's coming around the corner too, and we need some cool prizes. So World War Brick, <laughs> if you don't know what World War Brick is, it's our uh, Brick Mania's used to be annual. Uh, mm -hmm. Used to be actually actually a couple times a year. Uh, we do an event. It's a military builders convention, and we're hosting it for the first time since 2017. We tried to do it 2020. Uh, COVID got in the and way. And 2021. Yeah. <laughs> so we're doing it now. It's coming back 2022. So the first time in five years we're going to be hosting World War Brick. It's in our warehouse. On the Saturday night of World War Brick, we always have a charity benefit auction. And we hope we, we, we auction off rare Brick Mania kits. Um, you know, we'll be, we'll be pulling stuff from that comes back from the store. So it'll be a special auction. Sorry if you're not there, you can't bid on it. Yeah, right. And you, you could only bid, you only be part of the auction if you are a weekend pass holder. Mm -hmm. so, so it's after hours. Right, it is Saturday night after the public is, is shooed from the, shooed <laughs> from the arena. Um, then we have the, 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 real, the real party, the real business. The degenerates team. hanging out. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and, and we, we, we have fun. We auction everything off for charity. Uh, every year, it's a, it's a, or every time, it's a big deal. Of course, mm -hmm. we've done one in a while, but there is a, just a tiny, tiny handful of weekend passes left. Eleven, yes. like total. That's it. There's right. eleven total passes left. That is it. And <laughs> it's this. It's more of an adult building experience. Mm -hmm. But if you're a teenager, you're certainly welcome to come or a kid. But you do have to bring a parent. And each person who's if you're a, if you're a minor, you have to be accompanied by a. An adult, yeah, right. Who has to have their own weekend pass? We do have try to have activities for everybody for the whole weekend. It's a family event. Mm -hmm. um, we try to have fun, try to keep things going. But if you're really intent on coming, you got just a few days probably until those last weekend passes are gone. And obviously, if you just want to check out what the people are building who are displaying there as well, there are time slots that you can sign up for day passes as well. Bring the family, come hang out, see the cool builds. Right. There's also a lot of cool stuff to do here in North Mesa, Minneapolis. So very, very easy to make a day out of it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> lots of good food right around. Yes. Lots, lots of cool stuff to do in Northeast. So yeah, that's around the corner. And then Dan makes a good point because as we prepare for stuff like that, you know, you've seen with the, the, the last vault and then this vault as well, they've been huge drops. So know that you probably can't expect that necessarily every time around just because we're dealing with a little bit more limited inventory, which, you know, that's, that's what happens when you throw an awesome event. Right. Well, I, I, I think we'll have several more vaults that'll be, that'll be worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Honestly. we'll continue it. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> there's, uh, there's, there's plenty of excitement to generate as we continue to move on and like Dan said, with a schedule as crazy as this, we have to retire stuff as we as we keep cranking. Yeah, there's going to be a mid-year mm -hmm. retirement wave because I'm run, I'm running out of days in the in, in the year to <laughs> to schedule and restocks. Oh no, we dropped the we dropped the pilot. Some, yeah, I, I spoke to Rebecca. Yeah. Anyways, so one last thing I wanted to point out before we leave, just because this is a really cool build as well. This is the Hurricane. If you check that fuselage printing there, that is one of the uh, earlier examples too of SLAM undertaking some really intense cross element printing, uh, especially working in with that roundel. And so just some cool, the, my favorite thing about the vault is to look at the different like marks in history that these models meant for Brickmania and what they were innovating at the times when these were actually being produced. That's another great example of that along with the 3D printing here as well. So just wanted to point that out. Otherwise, remember all of this and more hitting Brickmania.com. Way more. 8 a.m. 8 CDT on Thursday. We're also going to do a minifigure segment with Landon here in a little bit, so stay tuned for that on YouTube as well. Otherwise, yeah, just, just remember, these are one of a kind. Mm -hmm. um, you might get a second chance if we have another display copy, but don't don't go there at like 9.30, roll in, it's roll, out of, roll, up, yeah, roll, out, <laughs> roll out of bed, like, where'd everything go? Yeah, like, it'll, it'll be gone. Yeah, these are, one, these are singles, one of one. Yeah, very, very cool. That'll do it for the part one. Stay tuned for part two, and thanks for watching.